Now, if you've been following me for a while, you'll already know that I haven't had the best experience working with the PlayStation Portable. The two games I've done from the system being Roads to Victory, which was a lazy Call of Duty brought down to a portable substandard, and Portable Ops, which reached the dizzying heights of okay quality. Now we've come full circle and are looking at Metal Gear Acid, a card-based stealth game. It's a cobbled together genre that really hasn't been done before and there are good reasons for that because Metal Gear Acid suffers from the same problems after it decided to have the card focus. The first issue is that Metal Gear Acid is a dense game. It doesn't have a ton of content to make up the 20 hours of playtime, and it comes from the actual gameplay itself because it runs so slowly that the designers actually put in a fast forward button. The card fights amount to building decks based on what your particular playstyle is as an example of great organic gameplay that different approaches can be taken to ensure the same result in the game, then going into missions and sneaking around until success or murdering of everybody. The problem with having the cards is that some parts of the game have stealth become impossible, so battles start, and when a fight ends up having an entire football team's number of fighters, turns take forever, and because everyone can take more than one action a turn, setting up plans for stealth or murder is unresponsive at best. Then there are the parts of the game when you've killed everyone in sight, and then have to wait by yourself for several turns to pass before you get to your destination. And this ends up being worse when the duo player is added because you have to constantly flip back and forth just to end up moving one person. There wasn't a lot Kojima Productions could have done to get around these problems because they were inherent in any game that wanted to use a card system for movement and combat, but the game makes up for that by having one of the best mystery plots of the entire series. Throughout all of the facilities and mountain climbing with Toliko and the Solid Snake, you start running into new characters and situations where the general idea of how things were supposed to happen starts completely falling apart. Originally, they were both sent in to recover Pythagoras, some sort of an experimental drug or something to augment battle effectiveness, but after we learn about Leon's petty plans for revenge against the US military for being slightly wrong, LeClown's involvement as a mindfuck betrayal, Hans Davis' existence as a doppelganger, and being tricked into giving Pythagoras away to Fleming so that he can fire Metal Gear that was built here all because Lobito Island was the stage for the Neotony Project, the plan to create psychic children, because as we've learned from Armacamp, that idea can never go disastrously wrong. The theme of the game is distrust. Distrust of your villains, allies, and even yourself. The theme works even better due to the game having a limited cast of characters, since almost every one of them ends up being a suspect of what the hell's going on. Then there's the introduction of number 16, with a special role in the plot, because that person is off screen at all times, yet somehow always has a direct control over what's happening on Lobito Island. You know what? I'm not gonna list everything that happens, because let's just say that the numerous mysteries that are going on, the friends that become bad guys, the off-again, on-again villains, and the constant presence of manipulation really makes the player question the corporealness of Lobito Island and the player characters. It's a true blue Scooby-Doo plot filtered through experience and literature that only gives the payoff right at the end when all the cards are laid on the table. Pun not intended. Although I will say that the game has a great example of doing a sequel hook right, and that the only part of the story is the death of Alice. Go out and pick up Metal Gear Acid as a product that used the PSP to its better potentials and have fun riding the roller coaster of doubt, and then get together with a friend and test out the card game against each other. I'm gonna roll off to the sequel, so I won't forget to set up the scoreboard here. And give you guys a victory for gamers.